All right, we're recording. All right. So your name is uh, Robert James Cross. Yes. And you you wrote me with some issues that you um, had or have with my with one of my videos. So yes. tell me what your issue is. So you said that a lot of the um, people whom you de you dub as uh, monarchists. Yeah. Um, have this kind of want to uh, reestablish the Holy Roman Empire. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, I know that that wasn't the, the main cause of your, uh, or the main crux of your video, but it was more along the lines of that they were um, a type of Nazi. And um, I don't know how many uh, monarchists you've, I guess, uh, met in the past, but... Um, the ones that I've met, which have been very few, probably like two or three. There's not a lot of you guys. Yeah, not a lot. Not a lot left, I guess. Um, they they kind of believe in the same things that I believe, which is that there should be a uh, more of a constitutional monarchy, more than a I get it, I guess absolute or divine right type monarchy. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, that was that was the main issue with the video that you you had put up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's fine. Um, <laughs> you know, I have met monarchists before. Again, not a lot because <laughs> there's just not a lot of monarchists out there. Which, yeah, yeah, which leads me to believe like the idea of a monarchist revolution is impossible um, unless for <laughs> some odd reason there's like widespread conversion to monarchism. Um, but the monarchist that I have met, because I am a Christian, so yes. the monarchists that I have met have been Catholic or yes. some kind of Protestant. Mm -hmm. um, and those monarchists, the, from my research of monarchism, it just seems like monarchists tend to be of that strata, ideological strata. Now, um, You've introduced me to a new faction of monarchism, which, yes. honestly, I haven't heard before. Left-wing mm -hmm. monarchism or a constitutional monarchism, as you said. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't know if you saw... I don't know if you've, uh, you've seen a lot of my videos. Um, I've seen a few. I've yeah. seen a few of them. But I did another mm -hmm. video a uh, number of months ago uh, mm -hmm. stating that the idealization of a form of government to me, I think, is is inept. Now, that is not to say that uh, monarchism is evil. That would be foolish of me because there have been righteous monarchs in the past, just of like course. there have been righteous politicians or righteous uh, even dictators in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that the idea of saying, well, I wish we could bring back the Roman Empire, or I wish we could transform America into a new state where there's a king, I think that is inept because it's disconnected from reality. And it also ignores the reality of human um, sin. Or, I, I don't know if you believe in the concept of sin, but the, the, the reality that we are all, um, we are all uh, filled with, um, with the... Uh, predisposition to, to do wrong or to be corrupt. Yeah, yeah, I get that. And um, that's why, again, there should be some sort of place guards or walls put in place with a monarchy. Um, and one of my, I guess, uh, beliefs in, in reestablishing a monarchy, especially in America, uh, would be that, number one, uh, is that there's no hereditary succession. So a monarch, you know, is put in place, their son, their daughter, whoever, cannot be put in place after. It would be up to um, a regent who essentially would be like their uh, right hand kind of teacher, kind of like Aristotle and Alexander the Great. It would be like if Alexander the Great died and then Aristotle was the one who got to pick whoever took over Greece after him or the whatever the, the world that... Alexander had conquered after that. Um, and I, and I think that in doing so that would make it easier, uh, for the next person to take over to be chosen. Cause then the people 
like me, you, whoever was, you know, uh, around when that was happening, uh, to trust that that person had the best, um, you know, future in mind. The best, the when best they intentions, right? Them. Yeah, the best, the best intentions, or the exactly. best interest. So it would be kind of like. Uh, I know this is not absolutely equal, but it would be kind of like your own Supreme Court, like a, a body of judges who are very intellectual and they decide what is best for the country. This person is best for the country. Yes, exactly. Um, the now one of the one of the reasons why I I guess fall into this category of wanting a monarch and what have you is because uh, I believe a monarch uh, would be a great benefit. To America because uh, I feel like they're seen not just uh, right now uh, but in history as a nonpartisan head of state. You know they have no no political affiliation. Uh, they're supposed to represent all people, and that means that that doesn't you know not just one race but you know all races, all creeds, all sexual orientations, everything. You know not just white people or the Europeans or what have you. And then uh, the other thing would be is that a monarch would not be beholden to lobbyists or corporations, you know, and they would have to, again, uh, kind of choose whatever the people wanted. And because that's their whole goal is to stay as, um, you know, righteous to the people as humanly possible. There's no limit to potential in that kind of, uh, governmental system because uh, the progress in science art uh, would not be swayed by political doctrines from any kind of affiliated party. Okay. So what I would say to that is, um, for one, what you say sounds great in paper, with the exception of, of sexual orientation. I don't agree with tolerating um, me as a Christian. I don't, I don't agree with tolerating uh homosexuality or, or I call I call it Sodom but yeah. you're a liberal and that's your position um mm -hmm. but it's sound overall it sounds good on paper right but yes. how would you be able to can to guarantee that it's going to be like that in it, it, perpetually it, it's again like, this is the my issue with people making idealistic observations is that um, it all sounds great. Like, hey, everything's going to be, I'm not saying you're saying this, but just yeah, as an example, yeah. everything's going to be for free. Everything's going to be, uh, uh, you know, provided to the people. And it never works out that way. You know? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I definitely don't agree with, uh, with you know, like I, I've told you before in the messages and stuff, that idealism is also a, a bad thing. And, I mean, I do understand that some of what I say kind of falls into idealism in a way, but um, I forget who said it. I believe it was uh, C.S. Lewis who said that humans biologically have a desire for hierarchy. And so True. you saying that um, there should be uh, no form of government or that you believe that no form of government can really um, bring about any kind of peace. Uh, I think that, and like I told you before, anarchy too is something that I kind of... I, I never said there, were, there should be no form of government. Yeah. I said that no form of government is going to be a guarantee of peace. That yeah. I did say. But it's not going to be a guarantee of perfection because humans, by our very nature, are not perfect. We are fallen oh, of course as not. humans. Yeah, of course not. We're, yeah, we, yeah. Are, we are susceptible to corruption, susceptible to mm -hmm. greed and avarice. That's why I don't... That's why, for example, like I read a lot about medieval history. Um, yes. I, I used to be uh, a big reader of medieval literature. I read about all the, not all of them, but I read about a number of the wars that took place in the Middle Ages. And also I read a lot about uh, a number of the wars that took place kind of after that in the, in the 17th century, specifically the Thirty Years' War. And yes. there were kings in those days and there were kings in the Middle Ages. And um, there were, uh, you know, feudal lords and <laughs> like yeah, there were knights and nobles yeah. and you know, people still kill each other. People, they did. people still committed massacres. There was um, all sorts of atrocities that were committed in those days. Um, mm -hmm. read, the, the the worst war to have ever hit Europe before the First and Second World Wars, and some people even argue that it's worse than the First and Second World Wars, was the Thirty Years' War. Millions, yeah, 30 of, years of, war. Mm -hmm. millions of people were killed, and uh, 
And but yet, you know, they were kings in those days, and they were <laughs> like viscounts, yeah. and yeah, then people still yeah. killed each other. So yeah, go ahead. No, that no, that's true. Um, and like I said, humans, uh, like you said too, humans are, you know, uh, full of folly and what have you. And you know, if I guess you want to call it sin, if you're a Christian, uh, but there, there, I feel like. I have more faith, I guess, in humanity than most people do, and that we can kind of see these things coming. You know, I mean, we, uh, what is it? A lot of political theorists have said that we're in the most peaceful time of all history, I guess, right now. You're right. That's which correct. I don't know whether or not that's true. I don't I know whether you agree with that. In, it's in, I would say we were pe more peaceful, probably more peaceful a number of decades ago than now. But relatively speaking, we've been pretty good. But that's yeah. that's gradually ending. Yeah, no, it is. It is, and we're get, we're getting, especially with the country the way it is now, we're getting a lot more divided. Um, not more. I, I don't think um, theoretically. I don't think more divided than ever before. But just more divided in a way that uh, is kind of captured on big media and what have you, and so it's easier for people to see. Um, if we didn't have uh, those uh, reminders every five seconds that somebody is against you, somebody hates you, some you know somebody doesn't want you around, uh, I think that people would get along more peacefully like they did back, like you said, a couple de decades ago. Mm -hmm. um, have you read Have you read Hobbes? Very little. Very okay, little. so so Hobbes Hobbes had a thing in in Leviathan where he talked about. Um, three systems of government that he said would, or that he said historically have been the most, um, I guess, uh, peaceful in nature, uh, not peaceful, but I mean like they've lasted the longest. Mm -hmm. And, um, the number one, one was monarchy, yeah. uh, which of course is the, you know, is one person ruling. Uh, then there was aristocracy, Mm -hmm. which is many, and then democracy, which is supposed to be all. Um, I don't believe right now we are in a democracy in the United States. I don't know what you believe exactly uh, in that sense. Um, but I think that if we had, and I think that monarchy, uh, um, fortunately enough, kind of has all three of those levels already. I mean, if you've seen historically, uh, monarchies usually have a court um, which would be seen as an aristocracy a little bit on the bottom. And then, of course, the democracy of the people mm -hmm. underneath all the way at the end that, you know, could, again, my main um, love of, of monarchy is the um, kind of the what have you, um, when they can rise up and kind of not, like the French Revolution, you know, when they when they got rid of the yeah monarchy. the arist the elites and the aristocracy, the king. you know, they, they were a lot of elites involved in the French Revolution. Yeah, that too. No, and, of course. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's a myth. It's one of the biggest myths about the French Revolution is that it was just a bunch of poor peasants who just wanted to get rid of the rich, and that's that's kind of the ideal that they give you in high school. Yeah, uh, of course. but the reality is that, and I know, I mean. I think you also kind of have a, an idea about the French Revolution that you find yeah. admirable and, and mm -hmm. worthy of. You no, know, um, I, 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 I've seen, I've, I've uh, read a lot of books about the French Revolution and how a lot of the, like you said, elites were um, kind of taken out of the country and brought to Britain at, for like safe passage yes, or what have you. Yes, and so just, they weren't killed. That's you know, right. members and then, of the clergy. Um, also. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I know about all. Members that. of the clergy fled to, to England. Uh, yeah, because they were killing all the priests and the nuns, and exactly what that had to do with freeing the people, I don't know. But yeah. um, the French Revolution, and you know this already, was done by a network of uh, ideologues and political mm -hmm. elites. And even before, you know, when you talk about the French Revolution, it wasn't just oh, 1789 happened, and no, it was decades in the making. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, there was course. all these philosophers that came up. I mean, the most notable ones being Voltaire and Rousseau. Oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. And a lot, and the, the big Enlightenment movement actually was being financed by some pretty big political players. Uh, mm -hmm. There was, uh, I think it was King Friedrich II of Austria. There was a number yeah. of other uh, big governmental figures who supported it. It was Felipe II in France. Um, so there was definitely a network of elites who were supporting that and supporting the idea of revolution against 
monarchism and also against um, uh, ecclesiastic, um, you know, Christianity or the church, the institution of the church. Yeah. Um, so the, the the thing is that it's not just a kink that rules. Mm-hmm. You know this, and I know I mean, you just said <laughs> between the people and the king, there are all these like aristocrats and the court. Yeah. And and Machiavelli talked a lot about this in his book The Prince. He talked about yeah. how he compared the the institution of the monarch with the institution of the sultan in the Ottoman Empire, and he yeah. said that the the sultan is kind of like this this he really is a monarch. Like he what he says goes. Uh, he may have his advisors and things like that, but what he says goes. Um, whereas with the European monarch, the Western European monarch, yes, there yeah. is a king and he supposedly has all of this power, but he has all of these, um, you know, courtly figures and notables who have his, who have influence over him. And yeah. a lot of these courtly members also represent certain interests in society, certain factions in society. Uh, this mm-hmm. was one of the reasons why, for example, um, uh, what was his name? It was King Rudolf of the Holy Roman Empire. He tried to appeal to the Protestants and said, okay, yeah, mm-hmm. you can have more religious freedom because he knew Protestantism was becoming very popular in his empire. And he wanted to prevent his 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 empire from, from fragmenting. Um, yes. So it's not just a king. There are all these other people involved. So if we were to... I mean, the only way you could enact monarchy in America would be to have a revolution. And yeah. how would you, like, you would, okay, you would have a revolution, right? You would get rid of our three branches of government that we've had for hundreds of years. And then you would you yeah. would replace it with a monarchy, but you would have to appeal to all the different power structures that hold finance and power and influence in the United States to remain in power. Or else you would have to deal with another revolution. That's very, very um, difficult. Yes and no. Because, okay, so this is the thing. In a, in a constitutional monarchy, uh, what happens is that, of course, there's, like we had here in America, um, there are a set of rules that are kind of stipulated. And a lot of people get together, kind of like uh, our form of government now, but a lot of people get together and they create these set of rules that the king or the monarch or whoever have to, the ruler, have to um, abide by. And so, and that's before this person is even put in place. So it's not like, again, the person's put in place and then we go, okay, now we come up with a rule. No, the rules are set far before the person is even put up into this position of power. Um, And they're, again, chosen based on their ideas about whether or not they can provide uh, you know, the wants of the people. And the people do include the, you know, aristocracy or the elites in America. Uh, but I think it would be a lot um, easier to kind of uh, separate all these people in a constitutional monarchy than it is in our current state of government. And yeah, there should, I mean, I've always said that there should be a a revolution in this country. I mean, it just doesn't, the the form of government we have now, and like, I mean, you said that, you know, uh, you don't believe any system of government, right, uh, can bring peace or or any kind of thing like that. No, I said that that there's no such thing as a system of government that can guarantee a utopian ideal or some kind of perpetual peace. There's always going to be friction and chaos and things to deal with and bad people to deal with. Oh, well, yeah, yes, of course, of course. But do you be- do you believe that the the system of government we have now in the United States is really you know, a, well, uh, good? Well, I would say it's good enough. Because uh <laughs> Hold on, you're breaking up okay. a little bit. Hold on, man. Hold oh. on. Hold on. Yeah. You're breaking you broke up a little bit there. You said something. Okay. You you asked me, you asked Oh me, no, I just said go on. Okay. So I would say that we are good enough in the sense that, for one, if you look at the United States and compared to much of the rest of the world, the United States is um, <laughs> number one when it comes to quality of life, or at least you can, you can at least agree that it's definitely up on the list in quality of life. We are the global hegemony. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a, a condition within our society in which 
the lowest 20%, the poorest 20% of our society is actually better off than much of the world. As far as, and you can look at all the statistics on this and the studies on this, as far as yeah. money-wise, we make more money as individuals more than a lot of people around the world. I used to live in a third world country. I used to live in Mexico. where okay. and, and in those days, uh, I lived in the... I actually read your article on um, on the election of Calderon over Obrador. Yeah. And I found that interesting mm -hmm. because I was in Mexico when that happened. And oh, were you? Yes, I was. And I remember they were blocking the roads and blocking the streets, and they were mad that Calderon won. But when I was living there, the average person was making five USD a day, five dollars, so 50 pesos a day at that time. That's what people were yeah. making. Whereas here in the US, we were making, you know, minimum wage, six, seven, eight dollars an hour. People working at Costco are making ten dollars an hour. No one is starving. Uh, t they keep telling us that we're all overweight. Um, <laughs> you and I are having this political debate or, or discussion right now. Um, yeah. and, and we're not killing each other. We are not dealing with civil war like a lot of, well, not a lot, but like a number of other countries are, like in Libya, like in Syria, especially in northern Syria, where it's been invaded by the, by the Ottoman, the Turkish government, soon to be the Ottoman yeah. Empire. Um, we're not dealing with narco violence like in Mexico. Uh, we're not dealing with really any sort of seriously existential issues as a society. Um, I don't mm -hmm. see what the purpose of a revolution would be, and I don't see what the purpose of in, of commencing something that would put literally hundreds of thousands of people's lives in jeopardy, because that's what a revolution would do. It would ultimately cause a civil war in this country, especially if you're introducing something as fringe as monarchism, because most people in the United States... Uh, would not agree with monarchism. I mean, like, we both agreed in the beginning of this discussion, there's literally a handful of you guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you would, I mean, so you would, in their thing, I, I, I am not against the idea of monarchism. I'm actually not against the idea of a monarchy or a king. I have read a lot about the Middle Ages, my friend, and let me tell you, there were some good kings out there. There were some great kings out there. Okay, so for example, in Russia, the yeah. Russian Orthodox Church is the official religion of the state, Right? most people don't have an issue with that because most Russians, whether they go to church every Sunday or not, identify as Russian Orthodox. So it's like, oh, the Russian Orthodox yep. Church is the religion of the state? Huh, great. Now, you have people in the United States who believe in this idea of, well, we should have a, a, a state religion in the United States, and, and these are also fringe people. But the yep. idea of a state religion in the United States is completely inept and it's, it's really ignoring the reality of American society where we have literally tens of thousands of different sects, different theological beliefs. Mm -hmm. Within the United States itself, Catholics can't even agree on what Catholicism is. Mm -hmm. The Catholic Church in America is very much divided between conservative and liberal, uh, between, you know, traditional Latin Mass and Novus Ordo. So I don't know how we would be able to enact, you know, if we had a Protestant religion like, oh, the Church of America or like, I don't know, the Episcopalian Church is the official church is the official church of the United States. That would also be ludicrous because it's like, well, most Americans identify as either evangelical or maybe just, oh, I'm a Christian and they're nominal Christians, but they really don't care. So it would just be it would be completely detached from reality to do something like that. Um, so if you were to say, well, let's start a revolution, I don't know how you you would be able to do that without the consent of a huge by huge. I'm talking. I'm not even talking 50% of the population. You have to, you would have to get a, most people in America to agree with you on that, or else you would have a civil war or something, you know, violent. Yeah, of course. And that's the thing is that eventually it's going to come to that. I feel like, especially in, on the road we're at now with our, again, a lot of what media spews out and what have you, um, that makes people hate each other. You know, we have, yes, the 50% versus the 50% right now. Um, or I guess, in, like I said, little fringe groups here and there, what ha you know, whatever. Um, but eventually that's going to come to a head. And whether or not that creates another civil war between, you know, the right and the left, or whether that creates a kind of just revolution to get rid of the politicians that created the 
you know, powder keg that became that civil war. I think that eventually that's going to take place. I don't know what's going to um, take the government's place after it, whether or not we're just going to go back to the way things were just to, you know, as some sort of nostalgia trip and then everything's going to happen over and over again, kind of in a, you know, cyclical nature. Um, but again, I, I just believe it would be a lot easier if we had one person that was, uh, nonpartisan head of the state that we can look at as people to make decisions based on a set of rules again that we come up with uh together as a people that aren't like as radical or kind of fringe as it, it, it may you know make it out to be in a you know utopian society i don't think that that i, I also agree with you a utopian society won't exist but I think that we can all agree to disagree at certain points in a governmental system. Well, like you just said, you said we have the 50-50 and we as a country are intensifying our hatred of each other. We're intensifying, exactly. we're intensifying in this polarization of society. And I agree with you that that anger is intensifying. Um, mm -hmm. Especially when you have uh, politicians like Trump who kind of is within the within the context of a GOP politician is kind of outside like he's he's very foreign he's something very different he's yeah. actually more radical than what we're used to mm -hmm. and i think mm -hmm. um as far as immigration goes he he's probably our most most radical president that we've had since uh well for a very, quite a long time i know hoover was probably was probably the worst when it came to immigration or one of the worst when it came to immigration he did uh, deport like over a million Mexican people. A lot of them yeah. were American citizens. It was pretty horrendous. I actually fear that something like that could happen again in the United States with the rise in anti-immigration sentiment. Um, but another thing that, that worries me is this hatred between people. Um, so, for example, um, conservatives will say, well, these people are all communists and they're enemies of society. Uh, and then the other side is going to say, well, these conservatives are enemies of society because they're against abortion and they hate women or whatever. And they have, they have, they have all of these different ideas. And what I worry about is sort of a, a Jacobin society, um, yeah. or, or like a Jacobin uprising happening, but I don't see that happening now. But if it would happen, it was, it's going to happen uh, in a long time from now. I could be wrong about that. Um, but yeah. if you have a revolution, the country is so, um, <laughs> the country is so divided, they wouldn't even agree on what to do afterwards. And you could have a French revolution style situation where people are killing each other. Even people within their own faction are killing each other. <laughs> Look what happened with Rob Spear. <laughs> like they killed him. Yeah. And, and there were people around him who were killed. Um, mm -hmm. And so, but when you say, um, like, we, we would have a civil war, and then I'm, I'm going to assume you think that a civil war would be an opportunity for you to enact what you want, um, you would have to get enough people influenced into monarchism before the civil war could happen. And, of course. And um, on top of that, uh, have you ever read about the Lebanese civil war that happened in the, no. in the 70s? happened in the 70s and 80s and it didn't end until like 1990 I, yeah i knew about it i just i haven't okay. read a lot about it well there were different factions in that civil war mm -hmm. you and each one wanted to materialize their own utopian idea so the palestinians wanted to carve out their palestinian state within lebanon uh and the maronites wanted to establish their maronite utopia where the only Phoeni quote-unquote phoenicians would live in in lebanon the shiites of course they wanted their own uh, society, uh, and then you had the Sunni Lebanese who wanted their own thing, and Lebanon is still divided today. But the thing is that none of them were really able to bring about what they wanted. Uh, they were they were they weren't really able to bring a, to to bring what they wanted into fruition. So the end result of the Lebanese civil war was still a divided society, which we see today. And secondly, yeah. there was a lot of dead people, and I mean a lot of dead mm -hmm. people. Oh, I think over 100,000 people were killed. You had massacres done on both sides. Palestinians butchered Maronites in Damur. Um, Maronites butchered Palestinians in Sabra and Shatila. 
Uh, there was mass executions that were done. There was also Israel got involved. <laughs> Israel got involved and bombed the hell out of Lebanon. Um, the Syrians got involved, and eventually the Americans got involved, the French, the Italians. So if you were to have a civil war in the United States, you would have multiple factions killing each other, um, people who, don't, who will never agree with each other, and then you would have outside influences as well. You would have probably yeah. Russians. <laughs> like, yeah. The Russians would be all yeah. over that. So I, I just don't see, like, why, uh, why, would we, why would we want the civil war? It just sounds like a complete nightmare. Well, yeah, the, 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 again, a revolution or civil war would not be a pretty thing, just as it hasn't been in, you know, his, history past. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you stated, uh, Lebanon had their uh, kind of civil war, and they couldn't agree. But people like me, monarchist people, we don't, obviously, I'm not trying to push my ideas on anyway. You know what I mean? If you don't, if you don't believe in that, I'm perfectly fine. Uh, but there are a lot of governmental structures that you, they kind of, they, they, you know, they want people to believe in these things with no kind of like, just like shut up and do it kind of thing. So if there was a revolution or a civil war, and then monarch, a monarch wasn't put in place, and let's say we went back to the governmental structure that we're at now, um, I, you know, people like me would probably just throw our hands up and say, all right, fine. You know, it's like, that's just the way it's going to be. Um, so, again, <laughs> that's, not, that's not exactly, you know, I, I know that it's not exactly, a, you know, a hard, um, a hard belief in that sense, but at the same time, it's not also, I'm not trying to get anyone to kind of join into a, a monarchist society with me because a lot of people that are monarchists, and I've, I've had a lot of discussions with people about this, um, believe that they'll be part of the court, which is why they want a monarchy. <laughs> they're like, oh, of course I want a monarchy. I'm going to be part of the court if there ever is one. And I've, I, I've never been somebody that, believe, that believes that. You know, um, I don't have a lot of money. I never really have my entire life. So I, I still see myself as a peasant, even if there was a monarch. Um, and that's a, again, that's a very odd, uh, take in the monarchist kind of perspective. Um, so you just said, you just described yourself as a peasant, but you do know in the French revolution, the peasants were some of the biggest victims. Yeah, of course. So maybe course you would, you, you would find yourself, like, how would you, how would you guarantee that you won't find yourself on the guillotine? Uh, <laughs> That's a very good question. Uh, well, partly because I, I again, I'm not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily call myself a royalist because I'm not that either. Because um, royalists, you know, whoever's put onto the uh, uh, onto the throne, you know, they like. There's a lot of royalists in Britain still, you know, who think that yeah. Queen Elizabeth is, you know, the second coming of Christ and what have you. <laughs> and uh, I don't, you know, I don't believe that. And uh, the only. The only time I've ever considered myself, I guess, the royalist was when I was um, going really deep into like Louis the Fourteenth, like you know, reading a lot about his reign and and what he did and what have you. And I thought to myself, I'm like, you know, if we had a, if we had a, a, a leader semi like that with some of the good qualities of Louis the Fourteenth, because obviously he had some shitty qualities too. Uh, he was extremely greedy. He built Versailles for God's sake. Um, you know, all those things. Uh, if we had somebody that was, a, that was a leader like that, or like, again, Alexander the Great is another person that I, I definitely look up to. And he was, you know, his father was a complete, you know, King Philip was a complete nutcase. And then Alexander shows up and he goes, you know what? He's like, it's time to, you know, do some things that my father could never do. And then he did. And uh, he was a great leader, died young, you know, but the, and he treated every he treated everyone as equal as humanly possible to the point where his his uh, followers his soldiers wanted him dead because he you know married a, a woman who was a Zoroastrian you know didn't, so, didn't he marry an Afghan yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah, yeah Bactrian yeah because he was making peace with the Afghan so he married a girl yeah. from the one of the tribal leaders over there which is fascinating yeah, exactly. to read though it's very fascinating mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, and it was very it was very ahead of its time because, like I said, most people would be like, "Hey, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. This isn't the way. We didn't agree to this when we put when you were put in charge." You know, da 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 da. And he was just like, "You know what? We all need to just get together." 
you know, he wanted to unite all the places that he had conquered, essentially. And he couldn't do that with, you know, by, by doing what, like you um, kind of talked about in your video, where, you know, reestablishing the Holy Roman Empire and only making like it for, you know, the Nazis want everything to be one race and what have you. It's like you can't unite people that way. That's not the way it works. And so, again, I don't... Uh, uh, whoever the monarch would be in this monarchist society that I have, you know, that have, that we all have in our heads, all of our, all my monarchist buddies and me, um, in my eyes, I don't, I don't really have a position on who, like what race, what color, what creed, what sex, what sexual orientation, what they, what they should be. I don't really care. I mean, if there was a, you know, black female queen i mean it's like who <laughs> at that point you know it's like who cares like as long as they can make the decisions that make sure that there's at least a, a you know a little bit more peace than we have currently in our system because right now yes the united states is a very peaceful place quote unquote um but it's not to the level that it could be and i think that that's because we have a lot of these governmental you know uh parties these factions in the state and what have you that are like uh pushing against each other and stopping things you know we have there's there's the liberals who want you know everyone to be happy but you have to kind of fall in line with them and then you have the conservatives who want to control everybody just like the liberals want to control everybody to make them happy and it's like you know and they, they fight constantly but we only have two at the moment we don't have anyone like kind of again on the on the fringe of any of that so it's always a 50 50 split that's what i'm saying and that's exactly yeah what i hate saying. being a centrist but, you know? but that's exactly <laughs> but that's exactly what i'm saying is that, that country is so split like how would this king be able to satisfy everyone and how like who's to say that the king this or like you said, you said it would be a group of intelligentsia who would elect the king, and supposedly, hopefully, they would have the interest of everyone in mind. But how would you stop these um, elites or these intelligentsia um, from having dogmas themselves? And 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 how would you be able to stop these people from from allowing their dogmas from influencing them? So, for example, like we have a Supreme Court, and we have nine Supreme mm -hmm. Court justices, but the Supreme Court is kind of split between two different dogmas one's liberal one's conservative we have we have four supreme court justices who are conservative the rest of them are liberal and uh yeah. they're also split and and they also have their own ideologies and they also use their own positions to to advance um their own their own ideology or to defend their own ideology i should say so for the example for one example of that is in pennsylvania there is a um there's a there was a controversy about a Catholic um, adoption agency that wants that doesn't want to give children to homosexual couples, mm -hmm. and the homosexuals did a lawsuit, and then the, it went all the way up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court, you know, is a majority conservative, um, is is a majority conservative court, and so you have four just justices who are sympathizing with the Catholic um, adoption agency. Now, if it was the other, now I agree with that. But I'm just using it as an example. If it was the other way around and the liberals were in the majority, they would sympathize with the homosexuals. So this intelligentsia that you speak of that would choose the king, they would ultimately, inevitably, inevitably, they would have their own dogmas. And they would want a king who, who would represent those dogmas. Um, I mean, kings are, kings are humans and they are open to being influenced open you know and and we hear about these kings who are like who are inept who are impotent as kings right but they're ruled by someone else um even machiavelli mm -hmm. talks about how if you were to even remove a king what would have happened is the people close to the king would just go back to society and would rile up their their factions they would rile they would rally up and then they would um influence those factions in society and god knows what they could do they could raise an army they could go to battle with another, with a neighboring faction. All sorts of things could happen. You brought up the example of Alexander the Great. And Alexander the Great was a great conqueror. But when he died, <laughs> what happened? You had the Ptolemaics and Seleucids, and they all started vying for power. Um, so, that's true. So that, that's the thing, is, is you can't really prevent these sorts of things from happening. Um, uh, when you talk about 
uh, for example, like, well, we, but we would just put in like measures that would prevent certain things from happening. I mean, within yeah. our own country, when this country was founded, we also put in measures to prevent certain prevent certain political branches from becoming too powerful. That's why we have the three branches of government. We have the, the Congress, we have the, the, the Supreme Court, and we have the executive branch. And more or less, they do cancel each other out. Um, that's why when we hear about like, oh, we have Trump in office, but you know, there's all these liberals in the, in the, in the, in the Senate or, or the house, um, you know, oh, we have this, this Democrat. Oh, don't worry. The Republicans have the Senate and the Republicans will cancel out the Democrats. And so yes, Democrats will win battles. Republicans will win certain battles. But the good thing about our American system is that because we are divided, we at least have a system where both sides can more or less be appeased. More or less. This is true. However, <laughs> but even but my point is yeah, that, my point is that even with our yeah. even though we've been here for hundreds of years, we've already enacted a system of measures and checks and balances. Mm -hmm. the, and yet we the still have people complaining. That are put in place. But yeah, we still have people yeah, yeah. complaining. People people are still upset. It's like even if you have a monarch, human beings have a way of messing up everything. <laughs> Oh well, no. Like I said, I don't. I don't believe that the that that'll ever change. There'll be people that hate the, the monarch. There'll be people that want to revolt, you know, and do it over again. There'll be things like that. But the 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 beauty of having one person at the head of state, like I said, is that it's nonpartisan. You know, we but don't have you to, able to prevent that. The, yeah. How would you how would uh -huh. you guarantee that it's nonpartisan? How would you guarantee that, like I said, the the body of intelligentsia. Who would be to choose? Who would be there to choose a king? How can you prevent those people from becoming partisan? Um, well, and, of course, there'd be a screening process. You know, what I mean? who, who would determine the screening process? Who, who would determine that? Who, who would do the screening? Process? Yeah. No, I get, I get what you, I get what you're saying, and believe me, I'm, I'm right there with you when I say when humans are flawed, they are extremely flawed, um, but. Uh, there have been studies, we were talking about studies earlier, uh, that having someone who's a great leader in a country who we could all, uh, who uh, most of the people, most of the populace can look up to, uh, helps keep things civil in a society, you know, helps keep things from being the way that they kind of sort of are right now in our current society. You know, we both, me, you and I, speak from kind of a, uh, a pedestal of privilege, just as we're, you know, able to sit here and, and talk about these things and not worry about, you know, the uh, Gestapo or secret police busting at our doors and yeah. take us to a gulag or something. Um, but at the same time, uh, why do we have to have these discussions? You know, why do we have to talk about, you know, enacting certain, you know, things into our government and it's because like you said there's no such thing as a utopian society and there never will be so yeah well in this discussion i'm i'm defending the status quo and you're going against the status quo of course. and yeah, yeah. and and um you said that um well, we could have you know screeners and we could have you know measures and things like that but my biggest concern about and I've done a couple of videos where I've said that ideologues will destroy us. Uh, yeah. And they, and they would. Like, if, they, if ideologues get what they want, they will destroy us as a society. They will. There's no doubt in my mind. Most people yeah. don't want war. Most people just want to be left alone. Um, but the problem yeah. is that when you have a civil war, what you end up with is two factions who are a minority killing each other. I'm, by minority, I'm talking about the ones who have guns. Not, not, yeah, of course. Not yeah, like yeah. overall society. But then you have the people who don't yeah. have guns, or they do have guns, but they don't want to fight. And there's just civilians in the middle of the bloodshed. And mm -hmm. what eventually happens is um, you have a bunch of like the winning side takes over. And then you have a bunch of people who are like, well, I don't want to be under you. I, I don't want this sort of system. And then what do you do with those people? Like, like, you, like you yourself said, you would have people who would be against this monarch. Um, what do we do with those people? Do we just allow them to, 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 to live? What if they start, what if they start making propaganda against the king? Are you going to have freedom of speech? Are you going to ban freedom of speech? Because that would be a danger, that would be a danger to the throne if you allow people who are anti-monarchy.
not just against the king himself, but just anti-monarchy, to roam around saying, we want to have a democracy, we want to have a republic. This is true. But, like I said, I mean, I believe, I believe in individualistic, you know, individual rights. So it's, it's I, I still think that what we have in place right now, our, our constitution currently, is perfectly fine as a set of rules for what we have. But, uh, and freedom of speech is in there, obviously, that's the first one. And I would not, if, if there was a monarch, I would not say... In, in all actuality, whether or not that would be a good thing to take away. I think it wouldn't be, you know, but yes, that would be a difficult uh, thing for society to deal with or people against the king that would want to, or the monarch to kill them or to, you, you know, have to kill uh, take over the people, you know, but you would have to kill lots of people, like tons of people would die. I mean, if you read about the founding of this country, right, George Washington, yes. there's the story, we've all heard it, that there were people who said, George, be our king, and George was like, no, 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 I'm not being your king. No, he didn't want that. So, yeah. so, so, so America, the, the, the idea of America was anti-monarchy. <laughs> to a great yeah, extent, it was, was anti-monarchy. Yeah, we are the first yeah. country to be built on, on, the, on, on that idea of being against monarchy mm -hmm. and having a, a democratic republic. And so... If you if you have a monarchy all of a sudden, well, would people have the right to form their own state and say, well, we don't want to be under the the kingdom of America. We, we want to carve our own little free state. I, I I mean, again, if I wouldn't want to be in charge of any of these things, but if it was up to me, I would say that would be fine. You know, we but that happened. That's happened all over Europe. But it wouldn't you know, be fine. There were plenty of times there were, when that there were, happened, historically. Yeah. There were, I can give you mm -hmm. an example. For example, there was the Bohemian Revolution in the, yeah. within the Holy Roman Empire, and it ended with a 20-something-year yeah. so. war. It was absolutely brutal. But the mm -hmm. but we also had, hey, take an example from, Amer from American history. We had the American Civil War. The South was like, yeah. hey, we don't want to be under the American Empire. And they got yeah. blitzkrieged. So yeah, why Lincoln yeah, wanted to maintain the Union. So if you have a monarch, he's interested in what? He's interested in his, maintaining his reign, and he's also interested in, in, in providing resources for himself and his kingdom. And also there are elites around him who would be interested in those resources as well. The South was a great producer of cotton and other agricultural goods, and the, mm -hmm. the North did not want to lose power over those lands. So if... Yeah. if uh, a bunch of French people in Louisiana say, well, we want to for form our own state and speak French. And we're like, no, that's not going to happen because the, because the American Empire, even under a republic today, the American Empire doesn't want to lose control over Iraq for crying out loud. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah, want to lose true. control yeah, over uh, any other part of the Union. So mm -hmm. could, could and I know and you haven't said this in, in the interview, but you you just, yeah. you describe yourself as an anarchist on your Twitter page, yeah. yeah. And so it's like, how could you have anarchy which allows free association, yeah, and monarchism where the king is going to be like, ah, uh, no, can't do that. I'm ruling over you. How, how well, like I said, monarchy is kind of the opposition to anarchy, obviously. You know, um, and so I'm of. I, again, I'm a human being. I'm flawed. I'm also of two minds. You know, one of my minds says that monarchy would be, again, the the best way to go in some respects uh, to, to keep things as civil as humanly possible because everyone's looking to this one person to kind of make the decisions. Whereas in an anarchy, people would still die. You know, um, it would still, especially if there was a revolution to create such uh, uh, a uh, system of government in America. But at the same time, the, it, I believe in more of a community-based anarchy, where, like you said, if Louisiana wanted to break away and go, we're just going to speak French, then everybody else goes, yeah, who gives a shit? You know what I mean? Like, go ahead and do but, it. But that's um, not reality. No, it's not reality. Exactly, it's not reality. We're both sitting right now, and you, you're, you're you're in the United States just like I am. It's like we're sitting here right now under what we have, in what we have, and we're kind of just making these rhetorical and, you know, these these uh, utopian-esque, like well, you said, I'm, like, I'm defending, you know, uh, 
I'm defending. Uh, well, I'm okay, go ahead. I disrupted. No, no, no. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. But no, I was gonna say like we 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 just we we sit here and we make these you know fantastical, um, you know, uh, what's the word? <laughs> just we're making. Uh, well, you, you're making a lot yeah. of hypotheticals. Does yeah, yeah, all hypothetical. It's all hypothetical. But I'm defending Everything the status happens. quo. But that's the difference, though. I'm defending the status quo. Mm-hmm. You're defending an idea in your mind and, and that you want to yeah. bring about into fruition. Um, yeah. But the thing is that I, and in our when we were writing each other back and forth, you kind of yeah. shocked me a little bit <laughs> when you said you want to yeah. see blood on the streets. Yeah. You want to see well, I mean, I mean, for the current for the current political structure, like I said, the the people that are in power now, I, I don't think they should be in power. You know, I just I don't they don't have the people's best interests in mind. Yes, like you said, we don't have to deal with a lot of what the other countries have to deal with as far as like you know being poor and and what have you and the and the relative violence and things like that. But they. Again, they're just constantly trying to get us to fight one another. We're constantly at war with each other. And I feel like if we didn't have that kind of governmental structure, where there was a one side versus the other side, that things would be a lot more peaceful here. And like I said, utopian, you know, hypothetical. But and and so you think you think under a monarchy we would we would just kind of unite? This is like when people say, Well, under Biden we're gonna unite. But I just don't see how I just don't see how someone who thinks someone who wants to see blood on the streets is going to help unite mm-hmm. anything. Uh, you want to see st- blood on the streets of Washington? Have you been to Washington? Yeah. DC. Uh, no. I've Never been have. to Washington. No. It's a majority African American district. And if you want to yeah. have blood on the street, and I understand that you are a liberal, I'm going to assume that you're a Democrat. Oh uh, yeah. Why would you, as a Democrat, want to see? A place where majority of where the majority is African American. The Afri- wouldn't that hurt all the African Americans living in D.C.? Well, no, I'm I'm saying the politicians. I I didn't say anything about what would, the populace. Okay, well, let's say you have a. Okay, for one thing, you would have to go through the American military. <laughs> yeah. the U, the U.S. Yeah, military. I know, I know, but I've had I've had I've had arguments with people before. Whenever I bring up monarchy, they always say like, "Well, who's in charge of the military at that point?" You, you know, know you if, if somebody to, wanted to overrule. You, you, you know, or her, or whoever. You would and have yeah, to, I get that. You would have to get enough soldiers on your mm-hmm. side. You would have to deal with tanks and airplanes, and you would have to deal with you know the U.S. the whole might of the U.S. military, which everyone is terrified of. Um, yeah. So, and then you would bring war to D.C. That would mm-hmm. inevitably encourage other people in different states to want to overthrow their governors because it's like. Oh, we're completely decentralizing, and then you would have a Yugoslavia situation yeah. where everyone's literally killing each <laughs> other. Um, people on the streets mm-hmm. are killing each other. You have the left and the right yeah. killing each other. So I, I just don't see what profit it would bring to the world. It, it, the only the only end you would have, the only end result you would have, is a big pile of bodies. Maybe you want to see that sort of thing, but I don't have those yeah. violent utopian visions. I don't like. I said I don't want to see. Uh, innocent people killed you know that's not and and but unfortunately like we were talking about the French Revolution and things like that that is that's what happens that, you know that's is that innocent saying. people end up what, getting killed what in, you're, these, in these things that's what I'm saying what you're saying is is to mm-hmm. me extremely destructive ideas you have a very destructive yeah. paradigm because what would stop people from like, okay you want to kill the politicians now which politicians yeah. do you want to kill i don't know but you would kill a bunch mm-hmm. of politicians now you think the politicians are the source of our problems the reality is that politicians are humans politicians are members of our society they are products of our society so politicians mm-hmm. are simply a symptom of society be they good or bad they are they are yeah. the result of the state of our society. So actually, we yeah. would want we, we would want to change society in order to change government. I, 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 most people, yeah. for some reason, look at society from the top down. I look at it from the bottom up, like a plant starts from the root, and that dictates the, yeah. the health of the rest of the plant. Um, but if you have um, so, let's say you have a, a society where you know um, uh, lying is considered really not a big deal. Well. Politicians are going to lie, but another thing also is that 
in our society, in order to in order to really be in power, you have to appeal to certain establishments and to certain elites, to certain corporate interests as well. That's how you get money for campaigns. So the yeah. the the, par- the the dynamics of power in the United States don't just lie in the hands of politicians; they lie in the hands of of the wealthy. And then so then you're yeah. going to say, well, we should just kill all the wealthy people, kill all the corp- the, co- the CEOs or whatever. Maybe that's what you want. But then if you were to do that, it's like, well, where's all that money going to go? Now it's going to go into the hands of the rebels. Now they have the money. Now they're wealthy. Now they're now they're the elite. It's kind of like during the French Revolution, people hated the church because the church had all this money. Then they killed all the priests <laughs> and the nuns, and then they took all the, the ecclesiastical property. Then they sold it, and they made a bunch of money out of it. So, oh, oh, yeah, and then they established yeah. their own religion as well, the cult of reason mm-hmm. and the goddess of, of, yeah. of reason, uh, and they had their own religion. The, the guillotining of the elite, the 1%, is a very left, you know, obviously extremely progressive uh, stance, and um, do I believe in that in a way? Yes, I do. I mean, in some ways, you know, if you want to think about it, those people have so much goddamn money. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. And yes, okay, if you want to think about, like, them starting their business, they've earned it, quote-unquote. Uh, but there's no reason for them to have enough money to, like, like Jeff Bezos, for, for example. Like, he has... Enough, he, what is it? They said if you saved five thousand dollars a day from the time that the pyramids were built, you still wouldn't have as much as he does right now. There's no reason for somebody to have that much money, you know. And yes, we live in a we live in a governmental structure and in a, in an America, you know, in America where you have the freedom to make that money like that. But I just don't think that that's uh, the right system. Okay, and so you killed Jeff Bezos, God forbid, but let's say yeah. you killed Jeff Bezos. Yeah. <laughs> and then what happens to all of his money? Where does it go? It's distributed. Oh, so basically the, what the socialists, the Bolsheviks wanted. Well, I mean, distributed rightly and not just like in a way that's, you so, know. That, so, uh, so is everyone going to get free stuff? Like free housing, free everything? No, you still have to work. Right, but, it, you know, but but let's say I want to get a mansion. Are you going to stop me from getting a mansion? No. Why would it, I mean if you have enough money for it, sure. But, <laughs> but, but but you just said but you just said Bezos has too much money and we have to stop him because he's making too much money. And I must and I must add to that the reason why Bezos has so much money is because we give him money. We use Amazon. We yeah, run we do. Amazon. Yeah, we do. So, yeah, so again, Amazon. of course, so you also contribute to Bezos yeah. getting wealthy. So, and also Bezos yeah. is, is is he's the head of Amazon. He can be thrown out by the board of directors. That's how corporations work. Uh, Corporations will fork out tens of millions of dollars to get certain CEOs for their companies because CEOs are really, by the end of the day, they are the decision makers of a corporation. So they're actually very valuable for kind of like the kind of like the monarch of the corporation. Exactly. Oh, there you go. Great example. So you want to have a a CEO of, of the United States? Well, corporations have CEOs. Um, so, and, and the CEOs, the reason why they make so much damn money is because they are the ones who can move the, the needle, if you will. Like they can move the needle in a company. Um, um, I, I don't run a, cor- a, a business corporation, but I do run a nonprofit organization. And I will say that running a nonprofit organization is very similar to running a corporation. In fact, it's called a corporation. And yeah. you have a board of directors. And you have the the head of the of the organization, and um, and that head of the organization, I can tell you right now, is huge for running an organization or for running a business, because he makes very difficult decisions that most people don't want to make. It's like a general. Um, so yeah. the general makes the general may not be in the battlefield, but hell, he makes very difficult decisions, and he has to make a decision. Um, uh, of doing certain things that could that will actually lead to the deaths of people, but he has to make oh, decisions people. that yeah. would lead to the, the least amount of deaths or the, the best possible outcome. Um, yeah. What you are proposing is literally what all these revolutionaries in the past have proposed. Uh, I know you may pick out little, you know, you're going to, I don't know if you're going to do this, but you may like pick out little differences here and there, but that's what people in, all, in numerous revolutions wanted. Take the money from those who... Mm-hmm. Basically, the have-nots taking from the haves. Let's yeah. redistribute it, and then what ends up happening is a bunch of people get killed. And the Chinese mm-hmm. did this, 
with the great leap forward, yeah. and it was a great leap to destruction because tens of millions of people died. The the Bolsheviks yeah. did this. They ended up mm -hmm. butchering tens of millions of people. Um, because what happens is, well, we're going to we're going to make sure that everyone in society is is equal, or everyone in society can make it. So everyone's going to get a house, but then everyone has to work. Like you said, we all have to work. Yeah. So yeah, we're going to work in the rice fields, and then and then it's like, well, you're not working hard enough. So now now the end the end principle is well, who works and who doesn't. Because we all have to make sure this utopia functions. So it's all about working, but we're, we're kind of working for free. So there's not a whole lot of incentive to make lots of money. And like you said, why should anyone earn that much money? So you want to put limits on how much money people can make. So you want to control mm -hmm. that. I mean, for an anarchist, you are pretty controlling. <laughs> but you want Yeah, to no, I, I, no I, I, I feel you there. But... We have, uh, currently in America, we have things called pensions, you know, where people, they work into a certain point, and then they can just retire and just make money by not working. Yeah. So we have that already. We have certain certain um, uh, forms of that where, yes, elderly yeah. people, um, people in the military, they can get pensions. I'm all for that. Politicians. I believe, what's that? Politicians. Yeah, that's also true. Um, but yeah. I, I actually believe in a balance. I don't believe that we yeah. should... I mean, I am a Christian, right? I don't believe in, like, might makes right or anything like that. Um, yeah. But uh, I do believe that we should have a society where we have equal opportunity and also we help those who who need help. The elderly, yeah. the single moms, mm -hmm. people who are very, very poor. Um, homeless yeah. people should also be given some sort of help as well. Help, but ultimately, yeah. you know, given work. Um, to make a life for mm -hmm. themselves. Like, I do believe in government assistance to society. What I am not for is massive revolutions against the establishment so that we can just bring about chaos, steal a bunch of money from people, and then redistribute it. But then, you're, I mean, there's a whole bunch of, there's a whole quagmire of difficulties in that type of situation. Um, of course. Who's going to get the money? Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, and then you're going to have people who are like, oh, I want more money than the other person. Or, you know, you could have interest. <laughs> You could have interest um, uh, intervening in that, you know, different other people's interest as well. Um, I, I just, I just don't see like like you yourself said. We already have some form of government assistance to society. It's like, okay, well, what are exactly are you complaining about then? Like, why do you want to destroy yeah. this whole system? Is it is it enough? Is what I'm saying. Uh, obviously, it is. I mean, we can always do better. We can always do better. But I don't see, like, it's like the difference between Luther, like Martin Luther, the reformer, yeah. the rebel, really, the Protestant rebel, yeah. and and um, Erasmus. Erasmus believed in reforming the Catholic Church. Luther believed in destroying it. So destroying er it, yeah. Erasmus said, well, we can reform it, but we don't have to destroy it. My belief is mm -hmm. we can definitely always better society, but why destroy it? And so how why, would you, how why would you, cause how would you a bloodbath? Reform, why cause yeah, a bloodbath? How would you reform the states? What's that? How would you reform the United States? Well, I mean, I'm not. I, again, we're 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 probably going to get into hypotheticals, but I would start out by getting rid of property taxes. Mm. I would get rid of property taxes. I know people will disagree with me I, on that, but you get rid of like, for example, okay. in in I think it was in in Michigan, they raised property taxes up way too high, and then you had people who literally bought their homes without, you know, paid off the loan and everything, and now you can't live here anymore. Like, that to me is terrible. And that goes against the idea of private property. Like, if I got a loan from the bank, but then I couldn't pay off the loan, I can understand, like, okay, you can't pay off the loan, you have to foreclose on the, on the house. But if you buy a house on a loan, but then you pay off that loan, it's like, well, do you really own your property? Because now you have to pay a bunch of money to the state, and if you don't pay it, well, you lose your house. That to me is unjust. Yeah. That to me, that, that I would get rid of that. Now, as a Christian, I would like to see the end of abortion, but again, I'm not naive enough to think that well, we can just illegalize abortion. And that's going to get rid of it. As long as people want abortions, you're going to have abortions. So the way to ultimately remove infanticide or abortion is to convince enough people that abortion is wrong. Um, so I don't really, I wouldn't rely solely on a government measure for that. 
Um, well, do you believe do you believe in individual rights? To a certain extent, yes. But at the same time, I think we as a, we are a collective body, and we have to do certain things to benefit each other. Like it's not mm -hmm. all it's not all um, uh, you know. I'm by myself into hell with everyone else. Yeah. Like for example, we have coronavirus, and we, we should we should do things as a society to curtail the spread of coronavirus. But mm -hmm. we're, we're divided even on that. We are. Yeah. So that's what I would say. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> anyway. That's definitely hypothetical. <laughs> those are, yeah, those it is, are it's hypothetical, but it's but it's but I mean, getting rid of property taxes would never happen. But it's I think it's a lot more practical than saying I want to see blood on the streets of Washington D.C. How about how about getting rid of the IRS in general? Uh, well, taxes are necessary for a society. If you get rid of taxes, then you get rid of the states. Um, you get rid of the state's um, ability to like fund all sorts of things like police force, fire department, um, Medicare, Medi mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, the military. Like, so obviously you need taxes. And if you're going to yeah. enforce taxes, you're going to have to have a system in place by which to guarantee that people are going to pay taxes. Uh, are taxes yeah. too high? Yeah, they are. But at the mm -hmm. same time, we are the the Roman Empire of today. Like the bottom line is that America is an empire, and we need all these taxes to maintain the American Empire. Yeah. If you want to reduce America to just an individual state, no hegemony at all, then we could do that. <laughs> the problem is Russia would rise up, and all sorts of regional powers would rise up. To it would be like Alexander the Great dying. Um, yeah. Um, Ch yeah. China's already already kind of overtaking us in a lot of ways too right now we're, we're a little bit over an hour so I, I just want to wrap things up here um i'll um i'll give you the final word but i yeah. I, I just want to say sure. uh, i just want to say that um that you as an anarchist what you're asking for would lead to the deaths mm -hmm. of hundreds of thousands of people um it would be akin to something like the yugoslav war which led to the deaths of hundreds of thousands uh, it, would, yeah. it I just don't see how you could you could push forward with your idea without putting millions of people in jeopardy. Not just being killed by bullets, but being killed by um, by starvation because you know you would have uh, supply chains that would be greatly hindered and impeded by war. Uh, if you look at mm -hmm. the situation in Syria, it's yeah, there's people mm -hmm. starving in certain areas. Uh, also, the fact that um, in order to in order to have a revolution and ma and maintain your seat of power, you would have to appeal to certain, uh, basically power brokers within society, uh, those with money, those that you actually want to get rid of, like Jeff Bezos. You would have to you would have yeah. to maintain that those people are are appeased. Bottom line, um, that's what if you look at the kings of the Middle Ages, they had to appeal to certain elites as well. That's what ended uh, King Louis the Fifteenth. Um, so I just don't see like how you could push forward with your idea without having like a tremendous amount of suffering and destruction. But I'll give you uh, I'll give you the final word. Like I said, this could be done peacefully. I don't think that there have to be that many people killed, uh, but there have to be some killed. Like I said, in in revolutions past, like the Russian and French revolutions. Um, and at the end of the day, whether or not it would come to fruition, again, is a, uh, it's an if and not really a when, not even a maybe. Um, but yeah, that's how I feel about it. Monarchism is a, it's a dying thing. There's only a handful of us, like you've said, like you said before. And uh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I don't think... Uh... <laughs> I don't think aspiring to something like the French Revolution is is great <laughs> because look mm -hmm. what happened to all the people who were counter revolutionary. A lot of them ended up killed. Over a hundred thousand people were butchered in the Vendée, uh, in the Vendée area of France. Uh, people were trampled under horses, drowned, uh, beheaded, butchered. There were rapes. There was even some cases of cannibalism that went on in the French Revolution. So. Uh, I'm I, I'm glad that people like yourself are a minority. I hope it remains that way, uh, and I hope that what you what you want never happens. God bless you. All right, man. <laughs> it was good. I'm glad we could have a good faith discussion. Yeah, of course, man. It was nice. Yeah, it was fun. I, yeah, I appreciate it. Okay. All right, and and uh, yeah, it was it was fun.
Yeah, it was. Okay. Well, have a good night. You too, man. Thank All you. Right. Bye-bye. All right, later. Bye.